and welcome to From the EBPL Archives, Encore Presentations from the East Brunswick Public Library. I am your host, Melissa Hozik. This event was presented as part of our Just for the Health of It initiative. Just for the Health of It is a proprietary health literacy program developed by the East Brunswick Public Library to promote health literacy in Middlesex County. To learn more, visit justforthehealthofit.org. Now, enjoy the program. Welcome and thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Kathy Chern and I am a consumer health librarian at East Brunswick Public Library. This program is sponsored by Alzheimer's Foundation of America and the Library's Just for the Health of It initiative to promote community health and wellness. Today's speakers are Alicia Gomez and Sandra Maynard who are national coordinators for the memory screening program at Alzheimer's Foundation of America. Before I turn things over to today's speakers, I would like to ask you to please mute your microphone and turn off your video. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat box. Our speakers will answer questions at the end of the talk. Please be aware that this talk is being recorded and will be posted online at the library's YouTube page at ebpl.org YouTube. And without further ado, I shall turn things over to our speakers. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Alicia Gomez, and I will be beginning brain health and Alzheimer's prevention. So our goals today will be to educate the community on Alzheimer's and dementia, bring awareness to the early signs of Alzheimer's and dementia, and provide tips for healthy aging. So a little bit about uh, the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. It was founded by Bert Brodsky, who was a caregiver for his mother, and he felt that there was no support uh, for caregivers of people that were suffering with Alzheimer's. And his mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So he never wanted another family to deal with not having resources or someplace to go while they're dealing with family members who are having Alzheimer's. So he created Alzheimer's Foundation of America for caregivers and create a support system. So at the Alzheimer's Foundation of America, we have our national memory screening program. We have education and resource center, including professional training. We have the AFA Educating America tour, which um, before the pandemic was going through uh, different states around the country. And now we're doing it virtually. Our support is through webinars and support groups. We have the helpline, which is seven days a week. We have our Alzheimer's Today magazine for caregivers of individuals living with dementia. And we also have research initiatives and program and services for individuals and their families. So Alzheimer's versus dementia. The terms are used interchange interchangeably, but they are not the same. Dementia is an overall term describing a group of symptoms associated with memory decline or other thinking skills. Dementia is caused by brain damage or loss of nerve cells in their connections to the brain. And some causes of dementia, dementia-like sy sy symptoms can be reversed. Okay. So dementia is the umbrella term that we use for all other dementia-related um, symptoms. It can be permanent and progressive, and a person with dementia has a hard time with at least two of the following. Memory, communication, and speech, focus and concentration, reasoning and judgment, visual perception. Sometimes they cannot see colors or they detect movements that are not really there. So dementia, the confusion of time and place is disorientation. They do not know where they are. They do not know what time it is. Uh, that has a lot to do with dementia. Difficulty doing certain tasks, such as trouble driving. They become unfamiliar with the locations that they are. They do not recall how they got there. Problems with language. They're trying to find appropriate words in conversation, or they have trouble following a conversation or initiating a conversation. Um, poor judgment. If someone with dementia, they might make decisions that may negatively Im impact them. 
uh, such as their well-being and their daily needs. They forget where they put things, misplaced objects, um, and change in mood. Uh, call it, they, sometimes they can be angry or they can be calm. So also memory issues. Some causes of them are dementia-like symptoms that can be reversed with treatment include thyroid problems, vitamin and nutritional deficiencies, metabolic problems, medication side effects, subdural hematomas, poisoning, brain tumors, anoxia, which is the body or the brain does not receive enough oxygen, or hydrocephalus, where there's a fluid accumulates in the brain. So what we also we, we suggest is if you feel like you are having memory issues to go to the physician, receive a blood panel, because some things could be corrected, such as if you may need a B12 supplement or another type of supplement. Um, there might be, like I said, nutritional deficiencies. So it's very important to always consult with your physician, request a blood panel. If you are feeling that you have a little bit of memory loss, you don't feel right, um, that a blood panel could detect some, some issues like that. There could be a UTI issue going on um, and some stuff like that could be reversed. So it's always a good idea to always go to your physician and receive a blood panel and just let them know, let them know that what's going on and how you're feeling. So why is it important to learn about Alzheimer's and dementia? So it allows for greater public awareness on the disease, helps remove the stigma associated with dementia. A lot of people feel that just because they're having memory loss, they don't like to share that information with anybody, especially family members or friends. But in sharing that information, you already have a support system with you. Your family can be your support system. Your friends can be a support system. And you raise awareness on healthy habits that can reduce the risk of dementia. And like I said, it allows the individual who might be experiencing memory changes for their network to know what to look for. And also, if you are predisposed genetically, it will encourage you to become more knowledgeable on and educate yourself to increase awareness. So there's normal, there's signs of aging. So we have normal aging, and then we have aging that we should be concerned about. So normal aging, recent memory loss, occasionally forgetting names, what you bought what, when you go to the supermarket. What did I forget to buy? And then remembering them later, that's normal. Problems with language, you're forgetting that one word that doesn't come to you, but later on it does. Problems with abstract thinking. Sometimes we forget how to balance a budget, especially now in our age of computer and internet. Everything is done for us. Our banking is done for us, which is pretty nice. But then again, it takes away from us using our, our thinking skills. Uh, forgetting where to put objects, such as misplacing your glasses or your keys. That is normal aging. I feel at my age, I do that all the time. I forget where I put things because there's just so many things going on around us, especially in our environment, especially now. So that those are normal agings. So the ones that are not so normal is frequent memory loss impacting the ability to function in daily life. You forget how you got to a certain place. Problems with language, um, following or initiating a conversation, forgetting what numbers are. You Simple calculations such as an addition two plus two that becomes, that becomes difficult, forgetting how to add or subtract. Forgetting where you're putting things. This time, instead of just forgetting where you put them on the cabinet, it would be forgetting your keys in the freezer or putting your glasses in the medicine cabinet and not recalling that they were there. Changes in mood and personality, having quick mood changes, again, from calm to angry, and then you start beginning uh, beginning to feel uncomfortable in certain social situations, and you start becoming withdrawn. Loss of initiative, no longer initiating, initiating things that once you enjoyed. Those walks now are no longer enjoyable for you. You'd just rather be home. Decreased or poor judgment, making decisions, again, that negative impacts one's well-being more frequently, and you start paying less attention to your own daily needs. 
uh, familiar task, increasing trouble while driving to familiar areas and getting lost. And again, being confused of time and place. So let's say you arrive to a location and you don't recall how you got there. Those are situations to be concerned about. Or the one when you used to go to the community center or senior center or the supermarket and not knowing how you arrived there or not recognizing any of the familiar faces. Those are things to be worried about and to be discussed with your physician. Um, what's important to remember is that uh, dementia is a multifactorial disease. Um, so therefore, there are many things that we can do to prevent uh, dementia. Uh, the first thing is to think about is to eat well. So the way you eat your diet is really important to avoid uh, having dementia. So think about what you had for breakfast this morning. What is your plan for lunch? Um, having a low fat diet is really important. High in fruits and vegetables. Uh, everything that's green leafy vegetables such as kale, spinach uh, should be integrated as much possible into your diet. Um, also the berries are proven to be having a, a positive impact on uh, cognitive uh, decline. Um, everything that's uh, whole grain food, uh, fish is good also. Um, so there are many things that you can do. Everything that's good for the heart is good for the brain. That's important to remember. Um, so therefore, avoiding everything that's red meat, fried food, processed food, salt, sugar, uh, limiting the amount of um, those food that we uh, take every day. It's so really important to avoid um, dementia. Uh, it's said that about a third of the cases of dementia can be avoided through uh, the lifestyle. Uh, so therefore, having a good lifestyle, healthy habits can really have an impact on uh, dementia. Um, uh, staying active is really important also, as you all know, probably uh, increase the blood flow to the brain, uh, which is really uh, important for uh, just keeping the brain healthy with uh, a good flow of oxygen. Um, the hippocampus, which is located in the middle of the, the brain, is uh, one of the most important part of the brain in generating new memories and is one of the first part of the brain that's affected by a low uh, oxygen level. So therefore, um, not exercising can really have an impact on your ability to learn new things and having new memories created. Um, so exercising is really important to keep that, um, the, the flow of oxygen into your brain. Um, anything that keeps you active that you enjoy uh, is important. So if it's yoga, walking around, uh, running, jogging, it could be uh, anything that's uh, a middle level, low level, it doesn't really matter. It's more to integrate that into your, your lifestyle and your habits. Uh, doing a little bit of walking every day can have a major impact on the flow of oxygen that goes into your brain. Um, Alicia is a really active marathoner. Uh, so not everybody can have uh, that level of activity, but it, it is important to just have something that you, you enjoy uh, and that you can integrate like half hour every day if possible. As I said, it doesn't have to be very active. It has to be just something you enjoy doing that keeps your heart beating a little faster. Uh, that can really have a major impact on the, the, the level of oxygen that goes into your brain. Um, learning new things. Um, there are many studies that prove that uh, your level of education has an impact on uh, if you're going to have dementia later in your life. But not just your level of education. Actually, if you're a long life learner, uh, it can have a major impact on uh, dementia. Um, what is called a cognitive reserve, we all have that. So learning new things, integrating new hobbies, um, even practicing things that are uh, not necessarily new, but like crochet or knitting or sewing, something that stimulates the brain, that keeps your brain active, having doing puzzles or crosswords or anything that you like to do. Uh, keep this as a daily habit, but also try to um, challenge your brain a little bit. So for example, you could just try to brush your teeth the other hand one day. Uh, that's going to stimulate your brain and it's going to create more connection between your brain cell, uh, which keeps your brain active and has a really, uh, can really uh, push uh, dementia away from you. Uh, it can really have an impact. There's a famous study that was led in the 80s 
that uh, with nuns. And uh, basically the, the nuns had a very similar lifestyle. So it was really easy to compare how uh, the level of uh, how far they went in their studies and how active they were in learning new things. And they did autopsy on uh, about 20 nuns after they died and to see the advance of dementia into their brain. And basically the, the, the brain of those nuns they were affected by Alzheimer's, but they never had any symptoms while they were alive um, because they keep their brain active and they were meditating, praying, uh, learning languages. Uh, being bilingual can really uh, build up your cognitive reserve, which really protects you uh, against dementia. And maybe it's not gonna push away dementia your whole life, but it can, um, slow down the process in a drastic way. Uh, we, we talk about like decades of the brain slowly being affected by dementia without any symptoms. If you have a really good cognitive reserve, you, you can gain decades uh, without having any symptoms. So it's really important to keep your brain active, integrate new hobbies as much as you can. Um, anything that you enjoy. I think the enjoyment part is the really important part uh, for act being active food wise also integrating food we like integrating hobbies that we all have been curious about um like for example i learned cribbage a few weeks ago and um at first i was like oh i don't think i can actually understand the rules uh we were just watching youtube videos and we're oh those rules are not so clear until you start playing and then you're okay like actually i i understand the game now um so anything that you you're curious about, go ahead, try it just to stimulate your brain. So be curious and try new things. Anything you've been curious about, you don't think it's too late to learn a new language. It doesn't matter. Maybe you're never going to speak Arabic perfectly or Mandarin perfectly, but just learning a few words can really have a major impact on your brain. Uh, getting enough sleep. So it is shown that uh, insomnia and sleep apnea has a, a serious negative impact on the, your, your physics, your body, but also on your thinking skills and your memory. Uh, so having a really good night's sleep is really important. Um, think about what you do before going to bed, uh, having uh, like a half hour before going to bed to relax, turn off your phone, go away from the screen, don't try not to watch TV um, before going to bed, uh, having like a routine that brings you there in a good night's sleep. And try to avoid any, uh, anything that might disturb your, your sleep. Uh, it's also uh, something I have a, a few uh, months ago, I was doing a memory screening on uh, someone and she was explaining to me that she had trouble uh, memory, memorizing things lately. And uh, she was a brand new mother. So the fact that she didn't have good night's sleep really had an impact on her brain. Uh, it, it's hard as a new mother, a new father, a new parents to have a good night's sleep, but having healthy habits around sleep uh, can really have a positive impact on your memory, your thinking skill. Um, you can break down your sleep. If you can't sleep eight hours uh, in a row, you can try to have a nap time in the morning or in the afternoon or maybe um, early evening. So having a good night's sleep is really important to uh, build build up your uh, connection between your brain. Uh, minding your medication. Uh, medication is something that if you've been taking something for years, uh, you're getting older, so therefore the impact on, the, your, on your body and your brain can differ with times. So it's important to keep in mind that it's not because a specific medication didn't have an impact on you uh, a few years ago that it's still the case. Uh, side effect can vary uh, from one person to another, and it can vary with time. Um, so be careful with the medication uh, that you're taking, new medication, but also something that you took a while ago that you're back uh, taking. Uh, be mindful of what you take and also be knowledgeable about the side effect of your medication. Uh, don't take anything. Uh, the medication you have a great, uh, in the US there's a great department uh, that approves all drugs. So make sure it's approved what you're taking, not taking any things that, uh, that's said to be good. Um, it's important to know the side effect also. It can really have an impact on medication, um, especially as we age. 
uh, the more medication we take and some certain medication can have uh, an impact together um, and it can really affect the memory and the thinking skills. And um, so tell your, your doctor everything you're taking because one medication can really interfere with another one and have an impact. And the doctor can adjust the dose, can change your medication for something else that doesn't have the same uh, uh, interaction. Uh, stop smoking if you can. Uh, limit your uh, in, like intake of alcohol also. Uh, it is shown that wine can have a positive impact on the brain, but with moderation. So therefore, uh, we recommend a small glass of wine uh, per day, maximum. Uh, less is even better, but a little glass of wine per day is okay for the brain. Uh, anything else hasn't shown to have benefits, just so you know. Um, and uh, smoking is definitely something that impacts uh, the, the lungs, so therefore the, the level of um, oxygen that goes into your brain. So if you can stop smoking, you should. And not just smoking cigarette, anything you might smoke uh, can have an impact on your brain. Uh, alcohol is the same thing and it can impact other uh, your judgment and compare to other things that might have an impact on the brain uh, so alcohol can have very negative imp imp impact and also I said wine can be good with limitation but it really depends if you're taking medication it might have an impact with alcohol so I would definitely recommend if you're taking any medication do not take alcohol uh, with it or tell your physician about it, and your physician gonna let you know what, what intake uh, is okay for you. So be careful with medication and alcohol um, because they really interact uh, strongly together generally. Uh, stay connected. Um, so having a good social life is really important, just not for your happiness and your mood in general, but also for the brain. It builds connection. Having meaningful conversation with people can really have an impact on, uh, on the, the just basically the staying like active thinking, um, remembering things. Uh, it really keeps people like at a good level of uh, cognitive uh, uh, reserve basically. It builds your cognitive reserve, but also it builds the connections between your brain cells. So it really uh, re push away the cognitive decline that you may face as you age. Um, it is normal, as Alicia said, starting your 40s, 50s, 60s to have, uh, to see your uh, thinking skills going down, your memory going down. It is normal, but there are so many things you can do to push that away from you, uh, to slow down that, that, that process. Um, so staying active and uh, eating well, staying connected is really important. Um, think about anything you can do, being involved with your community. Um, if you're part of a religious group, being involved with that. Uh, anything you can do to help people, like volunteering is really uh, good also for just uh, keep learning, it socialize, you socialize with people, you get to know your community. So it's good at a different level. Um, uh, we put playing board games there. So I'm a big board game player. I really love board games. It keeps your brain active, but also when you play with people, it's just so good to have uh, something that you do together uh, that has purpose, but at the same time, it's fun, it's good for your moon, and it's good for your uh, just relationship in general. So it's really important to keep stimulated. I know your blood pressure, um, so this is really important. It's shown, for example, in that uh, in the black uh, community, there um, the incidence of dementia and Alzheimer is really strong. Um, their risk is almost twice as uh, as much as Caucasian, and one of the reason is that the the hypertension hypertension and the diabetes is really strong in um, the, the black community. Uh, so knowing your blood pressure, keeping track of your, your, your blood pressure is really important. It really has an impact on the brain. Um, and it goes with uh, seeing your doctor. So keeping track of what's going on with you, not missing your annual checkup with your physician. Uh, there's so many things that, as Alicia mentioned, there's so many things that have an impact on your brain that you might be afraid of addressing because you're, oh, maybe, I'm having the first sign of dementia, and nobody wants to have a diagnosis of dementia. But um, the cause of your memory loss or your cognitive decline might be something you ac actually can be addressing. Uh, if you have um, a cardiovascular disease, uh, it, it can be easily solved, and your cognitive 
um, abilities will come back once it's addressed. So it's really important to address anything that you may have, um, like we, we named before, having like a deficiencies of vitamin B12 can have a major impact on the brain. Um, but knowing this, uh, you can address it. So therefore, you can really solve this issue and, and not being afraid of uh, the diagnosis. So going forward with those problems and not saying, oh, maybe next year I will go to the doctor. If you address those things right now, they can really uh, have a, they can be solved for most cases. Um, so I would invite you to see your physician every year is really important. And uh, finally, getting a memory screening. Uh, a memory screening is something that maybe you've never heard of, but it's a very short test. It takes a few minutes and it's not invasive. It's just a few questions to test your memory and thinking skills. And it gives you an idea of where you're at. It's a baseline. And it's a little bit like your blood pressure. Uh, so it's something that you can use um, as like, okay, this is where I'm at. And we recommend getting a, a memory screening once a year, starting 18 years old. You don't have to wait when you're in your 60s or 70s. You can do it right now. And just to keep track of where you're at, uh, you're gonna get a result. You keep track of this. Next year you do it again. And then you can see if there's something you can adjust. Maybe your lifestyle can have an impact on your memory. So knowing that maybe, oh, that my score this year is a little lower. Is there something I can change? Yes, there's probably something you can improve in your lifestyle to prevent dementia, prevent uh, Alzheimer's. Um, so there are many things that can be done. Um, so this is a little slide about, uh, think, think about people who around you who have dementia and Alzheimer's and how, the challenges faced by people, the caregivers. Um, so if you know someone who have dementia, you probably know someone who's a caregiver. Maybe you are a caregiver. Um, caregivers, they face many challenges. Uh, it's really hard to be a caregiver. It's really demanding in terms of time. Make, if you're working, especially in the same time, uh, it's very, you can get very lonely. You face situations that are like, that's really hard to find someone to talk to because um, not everybody necessarily know the person. Not everybody um, can understand where you're facing. Maybe there's shame also. Um, there is situation that can happen with someone living with dementia that can bring shame in their family and a stigma. There's such a stigma around dementia. Um, so please, if you know someone who is a caregiver, uh, offer them to help them. Uh, just give them, uh, you can listen to them. You can make a meal for them. It's, it's such a demanding job. So this is a little slide for just inviting you to look around you and your, your community, and uh, maybe in your, among your friends or family. If you know someone who, has, uh, who is a caregiver or someone who's, who has dementia, uh, it's a really hard job. And uh, it's not as uh, rewarding as it should be sometimes, uh, despite all the benefit that that brings to the person. Um, and so please reach out to them. Uh, we have a helpline. Uh, it's staff uh, seven days a week uh, with social worker trained and dementia care. Uh, so here's the phone number. I invite you to write it down. If you know anybody who's living with dementia, anybody who's a caregiver, or if you have any question about uh, what you can do to prevent dementia in your life, uh, please reach out to that helpline. Uh, it's, it's a really good resource to just answer any question you may have uh, about uh, dementia, Alzheimer, and caregiving in general. Uh, what you can do now, so I mentioned reaching out to the community, but educate yourself. Um, like I, we, this presentation today is really not so deep as it could be. Um, investigate what food can you can you take today that's going to have a positive impact in your life is this thing you like good for you uh don't trust necessarily the company selling product to you uh this food is so good investigate what what what's inside the food you eat um look into uh what what uh this specific disease you have look into your medication educate yourself about what you could change what you could improve to have a a healthier lifestyle. Um, enroll in clinical trials. Just this week, I've heard of a, not only, it's not only for people with dementia, it's also for healthy people. If you're healthy, maybe you're doing something right. If you're in your 70s, 80s, 
we want to know what what is the why you're so healthy why you have such a good memory there's so many uh clinical trials that are welcoming people who are uh, who have good memories who eat healthy food or don't if you have a good memory and you, you don't have a healthy lifestyle why why is that the case uh so look into uh, clinical trials that you can enroll in and advance science um this is this is the way to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Uh, this is the way to get uh, a better knowledge of which factor has a significant impact on uh, dementia. Um, for example, food, uh, I, I was just reading a few weeks ago how like berries is, is such an amazing uh, food for dementia to uh, basically keep your, your cognitive abilities. Um, but there's so many other research that you can be involved in to uh, build knowledge. Um, make healthier choice. So I think I've been pretty clear about this. So sleep, nutrition, physical exercising, um, uh, socialization, building up your cognitive reserve. It's not because you didn't go to school for a long time that it's too late. It's never too late to learn, never too late. So be curious, try things. Um, knowing your medical uh, record, it's really good too, just keeping track of things, being on top of things. Don't, don't believe that just your physician should know about what's going on with you. You're the first person who should take responsibility for your, your health. So make better choices, but also inform yourself. You won't know better than a physician, but knowing what's going on with you will help your physician if you have a good communication with your physician. Um, donate or raise money for research. Get a memory screening. Um, organize a memory screening event in your community. Uh, Alicia and I, we uh, do that all the time. We're all over the three state area. So if you want to organize an event, reach out to us. We will come, maybe after the pandemic, we will come and we will um, help you uh, lead this event in your community. Uh, we are uh, launching just now a virtual memory screening. So if you're interested, we're starting July 8th to offer memory screening on Wednesdays from 10 to 4. Um, we have our email at DM. So if you're interested in getting a virtual memory screening, it takes five, 10 minutes maximum of your time. It's just a few questions and you can keep track of your score and be on top of your, on your, of your memory. Um, so here are resources. Uh, you have the helpline. We have a chat, um, a box that's uh, translate everything in 90 languages. So if you're not a native English speaker like myself, uh, feel free to reach out to the, the chat box and uh, ask your questions to our social worker. They will respond in English and tr the, 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 the program will translate in your language uh, and answer your questions. Um, we have the, the Educating America tour. So we have tons of webinars. You can go to our website and inform yourself. There are tons of webinars about all kinds of topics, about caregiving, about prevention of Alzheimer's. There's so many things you can uh, learn about. Uh, we offer also, if you're a healthcare professional, we offer training and certification. So healthcare professional, social worker, uh, if you're a professional caregiver, if, you, if you're a caregiver and you just want to improve your skills and know more about uh, Alzheimer's and dementia, uh, we offer different kinds of training. Uh, we have a magazine also for caregivers. We have support groups, as Alyssa mentioned, and webinars, as I mentioned again, and Alyssa mentioned. Um, so feel free to reach to us. We also have a memory uh, test online. Uh, it's a different kind of test, but it's really fast, really short. So you can test your memory there. You can also reach out for us for uh, the uh, more scientific version of a memory screening. Uh, here are our emails and uh, the phone number. So you can call for uh, if you want to make an appointment on Wednesdays uh, for virtual memory screening, or you can email us directly, and we will be really pleased to uh, to uh, offer you a memory screening. It's free, by the way, it's really important. It's free, all our services are free. So just so you know, if you have any questions now, I think this is fine. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box. Okay, so we have one question in the chat. Um, are men or women more likely to get Alzheimer's? You want to, uh, in general, for every disease, men are more likely to get Alzheimer's, uh, but it's not really the case with uh, Alzheimer's. Uh, I mean, I'm not super clear, but in general, most diseases affect men more than women. 
for Alzheimer's, it's not really the case. Uh, women are, uh, are uh, have a lot of cases. I don't know if Alicia have more specification about this. Um, yeah, no, Sandra, that's, that's right. Like with any disease, it's very difficult to narrow it down to men, women, Alzheimer's dementia. It does not uh, discriminate age, gender, ethnicity. So I think it's very important just to be educated and to continue to take care of ourselves and be aware of our health and ourselves completely. Like Sandra had really, she went into like health, fitness, diet. Um, that's very important. Um, I feel like sometimes, especially now, we tend to not take care of ourselves because of what's going on. Our mental health is important as well as our physical health. So um, as far as who's more likely, at, I, for me, I just think it's, um, it's open right now because I, I feel like anybody can, um, can have eventually symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, someone asked about the tests if they're all visuals. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, certain tests are just verbal. Um, and this is important to know because uh, depending on your, uh, if you're a native English speaker or if you have a different cultural background, uh, the result can uh, be dif different from one person to another. So there is a threshold, uh, but different tests perform differently depending on your uh, language and also your uh, cultural background and your level of education, um, your vocabulary, but they're not all visual. Uh, we can do a screening over, over the phone, mm -hmm. so it's not all visual. All right, somebody posted, I'm gonna mispronounce uh, this, uh, the curcumin and turmeric, coconut oil, curry leaves helps in Alzheimer's. Studies have shown the low prevalence of the disease in India due to this. I believe we even mentioned a couple of, um, Sandra, I think it was turmeric that we've heard a, a few mm -hmm. um, people have said that it's, it's helpful. We always say whatever is natural to try it, to take, like it won't hurt you and it may help you. So, and always, always please check with your physician because sometimes some medications you may be taking may not be a good um, response to that. But I, I certainly tried the turmeric. I started doing that um, at my age. <laughs> and I, I just think nothing will be harmful to you, especially um, things that are natural, I think is always good. Yeah, I think for the turmeric, uh, that specific studies uh, I saw in, um, it's a specific form of turmeric, first of all. Uh, so, and it's a certain quantity also. So it's important to keep in mind that if you take a turmeric pill, it won't hurt you, but it probably won't have much of an impact unless you're you're really following the guideline of that study and using that same kind of turmeric uh, from that specific study. Um, it won't hurt, I think. But as Alicia mentioned, don't forget that even if it's just turmeric or a vitamin or something natural, it might have an interference with the medication you're taking. So this is important to keep in mind. It's not because it's natural that it doesn't have side effects. Um, so be careful what you're taking. Uh, coconut oil, um, I mean, everything that's good for the heart is good for the brain. Coconut oil is not really something that, I know it has a whole of like the trendy, healthy things, but it isn't very healthy. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend coconut oil. Uh, olive oil is much better for your heart uh, over uh, coconut oil. So I wouldn't recommend that. I think for beauty product, Coconut oil is fine enough, but I wouldn't I wouldn't take that as food uh, product necessarily. It's not better than uh, olive oil. Olive oil is superior by far. Um, um, is Alzheimer common in teens? Um, I I just know about early onset Alzheimer's, um, which is earlier than uh, I believe we said fifty two or sixty two. Um, but earlier in common in teens, I'm not, that I wouldn't be able to answer. I haven't heard of anybody um, younger than 18 uh, with any symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia. And perhaps if there is um, a concern about uh, memory loss, maybe the, the teen has had some uh, 
prior incident, such as a concussion or something going on, uh, definitely an MRI scan, CT scan, if um, there's a concern about that. Again, um, I have never, uh, in my professional experience, I have never come across anybody younger than 18 um, have any symptoms of Alzheimer's or dementia. Yeah, I don't think it's very common. Um, are there particular one-on-one -on -one activities one can partake with Alzheimer's affected individuals to help stimulate their brains? For example, reading poetry, guided conversations, etc. Yeah, those are great. Um, you can do self-led uh, meditations, uh, chair yoga, um, dancing, if they're able to get up, or chair dancing. Um, AFA has activities on their Facebook page uh, that promotes uh, that, especially now some certain people cannot visit family members, they cannot get out as they used to. So we have, there's a lot of online activities that can be done for the person who is alone with the other person. Um, uh, like Sandra had said, puzzles is a good idea, jigsaw puzzles, um, scrabbles, anything that's going to engage um, the person uh, that's affected with Alzheimer's is a good idea. Craft and arts also I would recommend. Uh, one study I saw a few years ago about music. Um, music is a really uh, beautiful way to keep the memory active, uh, especially if you know what the person uh, used to listen to. Uh, music is a beautiful way to keep the connection. Um, it's one of the last thing that goes when the person is progressing in their uh, disease. And toward the end, like the person probably won't be speaking, but music, it's the one thing until the very end that people connect to the music they used to love and associate with uh, memories and all things like that. So music is definitely like the one thing I would um, push forward, but all these things that we offer also crafts and uh, yoga and all these things, anything that the person is still capable of doing, uh, depending on their physical abilities to dancing, if possible. Uh, can learning a new ha language help? Yes, that's, I, I'm hoping to learn a little French Canadian with Sandra. <laughs> Anything new, I think is, um, it's great. Uh, uh, you know, like they always say kids are sponges, like when they start learning new things. But I think us too, as adults, uh, if we want to learn a new language or I learn a new recipe, starting to cook different things. I think that's great. You know, um, like we said, like nothing will harm you, <laughs> especially when it comes to um, self-educating oneself. I think that's important. So yeah, I would definitely try a new language. Yeah, you probably won't speak necessarily um, perfectly, especially the older we get, past 40 years old, usually it gets really hard to learn languages, especially if you're not really good at it to start with. Um, but even if you just learn a few words uh, it, and keep them in your brain, uh, it's really good. It, it doesn't hurt and is, is actually the opposite. Um, it, it brings connection together. So mm -hmm. anything new to learn, like Alicia mentioned, like cooking, new recipes, anything new is really good. Um, I don't know if there's other... Uh, the presentation is gonna be on, uh, I think, uh, Kathy, put it there, but the presentation is going to be on YouTube. So uh, if you want to have access to the presentation, you can uh, watch it again on YouTube. Okay, so I think that's it for the questions. Um, so thank you, Sandra and Alicia, for taking the time to talk to us and to answer our questions. So like, uh, like Sandra had said earlier, the talk is being recorded and the link to the recording will be emailed to the registrants and it'll be uploaded to the library's YouTube channel at ebpl.org slash YouTube. And we also welcome you to join us for the library's other upcoming health programs, frequently asked questions about plastic surgery and learn more about plastic surgery, which consists of reconstructive surgery and cosmetic surgery. This talk aims to clarify common questions and misconceptions about plastic surgery and will take place on Tuesday, July 14th at 6 p.m. 
and just say yes to fruits and veggies. Learn healthy eating skills and build confidence in shopping and eating healthier on a low budget. This talk will take place on Friday, July 17th at 12 p.m. To learn more about these programs and to register, go to ebpl.org slash calendar. And thank you all for joining us today. Have a great day and stay safe. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us for this week's Encore presentation. To join us for live programs or to learn more about the East Brunswick Public Library, visit our website at ebpl.org.